everybody, what's up, taters? This is Tree from treeoflogic.com. Well, 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 Tommy Lauren thinks men are trash. That's a very conservative thing to say there, Tommy. I know I'm a Jane come lately to responding to this video. And trust me, even though I'm late to the party, I have come with lots of gifts. Not only will I bring a unique perspective and opinion to all the things that Tommy Lauren has said in her video, but I will also give you some background information about Tommy Lauren to let you know that it's not the men, it's her. Now, before I respond to her rant, let me share some background information about Tommy Lauren to give you an understanding about her mental state of mind and why she thinks men are trash. Eh, let's just say, like attracts like. You see, back in June of 2019, Tommy and her boyfriend, Brandon Fricky, of a year and a half, announced their engagement. At that time, Tommy was over the moon. However, after reviewing some footage of Tommy talking about her fiance, she said something that raised red flags. Watch and listen. So, how did you guys meet originally? We met in a bar in Hermosa Beach. No way. We did, yeah. The old fashioned way. It's, yeah. it's kind of hard to meet that way now. Yeah, you know? it absolutely is. But, uh, you know, at first I walked in and I saw him in a USC t shirt, and that was just a no go for me. When I saw a USC, I'm like, nah, not for me. Very cool. But luckily it was his sister's college shirt. So, him wearing a USC shirt was a no go for you, girl? Really? And because that shirt ended up being his sister's, you decided to give him a chance. <laughs> but she's not the one with the issues, right? It's all the men, they're trash. She is A-OK. -okay. Now, back in October 2019, Brandon ran for Congress in the 33rd District against Ted Lieu. You would think that Tommy and all her connections would help her handsome beau, right? Wrong. Tommy never promoted him, never toured with him, or introduced him to any of her powerful friends. The only thing she did was stand next to him in one of his Facebook videos, standing there, smiling, saying nothing. I'm sure that's the first and last time he's seen her that quiet. <laughs> It appears to me that Tommy didn't support Brandon's decision to enter politics. Perhaps she found that threatening to her career, or she wasn't interested in sharing the spotlight. Regardless of the answer, it was clear to me that Tommy was not standing by her man. So during the month of February 2020, she called off the wedding and returned the $50,000 engagement ring that he brought her. Now, what do you think the reason was for Tommy Lauren to call off her engagement? Ready for this? Because she wasn't ready. <laughs> And it's only the conservative men who have the issues, right, Tommy? It's not you. It's them, right? Totally not you. You are perfect. They're the ones with the issues, right? So now let's fast forward to last week, August the 4th, 2020, um, six months later, where Tommy let us know how men are trash. What's up? Oh, great. She recorded this in vertical mode. So normally I do final thoughts and I do Instagram lives and I do rants about politics. Um, there's plenty to talk about in politics right now. Do it every day. It's a great time. But something as of recently has been on my mind. And I consider myself a teacher, a helper, um, someone who could possibly inspire people to be better. So with that being said, this is a PSA for all the men out there and all the boys who think they're men, but they're actually boys. Ooh, chow, she is salty right off the bat. This is gonna be the summer of canceling boys. Now, from my own personal experiences and the experiences of all of my friends, which range in age from 24 to 36, we've all got issues. Now, I will also say this. All of my friends are attractive. All of my friends are successful. All of my friends have something going on. Almost every single one of them have an issue with men. Wait, you just said that you and your friends who all range from ages 24 to 36, you all have issues. 
So you all are carrying baggage. And instead of working on that and fixing yourselves, you want to deflect and talk about how all men are trash. You're perfect. You and your friends are perfect. Yeah, you got some issues, but that's not the problem. It's the men. It's the men. The men have to fix themselves. We are perfect even with our flaws and all. Girl, get out of here with that nonsense. And you have to start looking at that and thinking, if an age range of that many people, including myself, living really all over the country and being blonde, brunette, short hair, long hair, I mean, tan, super white, super pale. I mean, these women range in every body type and every everything. They're all successful, they're all intelligent, they're all good people. But if all of these women, including myself, are having issues, then I have to think, it might not be us. It might be you, it might be men. And it might be women. I mean, the thing about it is it's definitely men, but it's definitely women. So it's definitely you. You see, Tommy, you have issues. And therefore, as a woman, you attract other women who have similar issues as yourself. You know that old saying, birds of a feather flock together? Well, guess what? It doesn't stop there. You attract men with issues or men that actually mirror your issues. You can't get out of working on yourself. You can't get out of realizing that your female friends, you all attract each other because you have some issues in common. There's an old saying that goes something like, um, show me your friends and I can tell you who you are. And basically, if all of you all are complaining about several things that you have in common in reference to the opposite sex, it's you, not them. Now, I've often talked about the pussification of America and how men are no longer men. I talk to my mom about this a lot and she says, well, maybe it's just the guys in Texas. Maybe it's just the guys in Los Angeles. Maybe it's just the guys, just the guys. Um, it is not just the guys in Los Angeles, Nashville, Dallas, and it's not, they're not any better in the Midwest. They, quite frankly, I think they're trash all over this country in the age range of about 20 to I think about 55, maybe even 60. A lot of men are trash. A lot of men don't know how to treat women. A lot of men don't know how to really, quite frankly, pull their heads out of the sand and pay attention. So I am going to help you. How are you gonna help them, Tommy? How are you gonna do that? How does that work? You're a woman. And you're saying that you as a woman can teach men how to be men? That's something that a liberal feminist would say. And I thought she was a conservative. I guess the mask is off, huh? Hmm. Anyway, this is so hypocritical. Imagine if a man was to say something ridiculous like that. If he was to get on Facebook and say, you know what? You women act like little girls and I'm going to teach you how to be a woman as a man. I'm gonna be a man. A man is gonna teach you as a woman how to be a woman. Oh my God, if he was to say that he would get canceled, he would definitely get deplatformed. People will come for him because it is never acceptable for a man to say that he's gonna teach a woman how to be a woman. But it's okay for women, particularly in this case, a woman, Tommy, Lauren to say that she's going to help men by teaching them how not be boys, but how to be a man. This sounds so ridiculous. I'm sorry, girl. You're a woman and a woman cannot teach a man how to be a man. And these are some of the things that I've experienced. And these are some of the things my friends have experienced. I, again, I'm just going to lay a few things out. They haven't all happened to me. Some of them have just happened to my friends. A lot of them have happened to me. So the first thing, and I've made notes, by the way, I've made notes. This is how invested I am in this because I've been thinking about this for about two weeks solid now. First question for men. If you like a girl, if you're even somewhat interested in a girl, you need to ask yourself this question. Are you single? No, I don't mean are you kind of single, seeing five people, dating somebody, still kind of in a relationship, kind of broken up, kind of on again, off again, kind of married, kind of divorced. Are you actually single, single? Why should he ask himself if he's single, single? Isn't it your job? Isn't it your job to ask him if he's single? And if you think he's going to give you a nuanced answer, 
then why don't you make your questions specific? Like, are you married? Are you in a relationship? Are you seeing someone? Are you dating? Are you intimate with anyone? I mean, cover all the bases. And if he says no to all of those questions, then your next question should be, what are you looking for specifically? If he says something like, well, I'm just here to have fun or, you know, nothing serious. I'm just dating, then pew, leave. He's not going to be faithful to you. He's not going to be, obviously, he's not going to be single for long if he is, in fact, single at that time. But if he says something like, I'm looking for a serious relationship, possible marriage, then there you go. There's a strong chance he's telling you the truth that he is indeed single. But you have to ask those questions. You have to be very specific with the married. Are you divorced? Are you intimate with another woman? or man, okay, with 2020, honey. Okay, you have to ask them if you're dating, are you seeing anyone? Are you casually doing anything? You have to make sure that you get that out of the way. So don't be afraid to ask those questions and then do the follow-up question. What are you looking for? It's really pretty easy. Um, the second thing that I think is very important that men don't seem to understand. There are very few women out there, and I'm speaking from personal experience as well as from all of my friends and all the women, quite frankly, that I talk to. There is not a woman out there that wants to be your pen pal. Your pen pal? She doesn't want to get your texts, your good morning texts, your good night texts, your random through the day texts, if they don't follow up with a plan to actually, here's the kicker, in person hang out. Now I know what you're saying, oh, it's COVID, people can't hang out in person. This has not been a four month problem. This has been a five year problem that I've experienced with men and my friends have experienced with men. Women do not want a pen pal. We don't want a texting pal. We quite frankly don't care if you text us all day or if you don't text us at all. If you're not gonna make a plan to actually see us in person, not interested. Okay, I can't relate to this problem because Whenever I exchange phone numbers with a guy, I let him know right off the bat that, hey, I'm not one of these women who likes to send a bunch of text messages because I'm very busy. And if you send me a text message, you can only send me three text messages a day before actually calling me. I'd rather talk to you on the phone than to get a gazillion text messages. So to sit here and to be like, what you doing? Mm, where you wearing? Uh, who that girl that added you on Facebook? I, I don't, I'm gonna, I don't have time for that. I don't, I don't have time for all that. Okay. Three text messages a day. And once you get to that third one, you cannot give me another one until you actually pick up the phone and dial my number and talk to me voice to voice. All right. I, I don't really have that problem. And whenever I tell this to men, they do it. It's really that simple. They're, they're not complex creatures. I say, hey, three texts a day. They go, okay, cool. And sometimes they don't even go to three. They just say, hey, can I, are you available to talk? And I go, yeah. And then boom, the phone is ringing. So I don't really do all this text messaging thing and I don't really have that problem, but you know, hey, I mean, I can see it's a legitimate argument and a legitimate concern, but you can solve that problem by just telling them. Would that also, leads me to my second point. This is gonna be backwards for you guys. Make plans. Make a plan. Do not assume that you can text somebody randomly in the middle of the day, what are you doing? Or text them at midnight or 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. or even just within hours of when you actually wanna see them and think that they're going to be available. Again, Tommy, there's really nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want, that's what you want. Just tell them that's what you want and that's what you expect. Communicate, use your words, girl. Communicate to them and tell them this is what you want. You are really making this complicated. <laughs> I personally, once I get home and I take my makeup off and I'm watching TV, I'm no longer interested. So if you didn't make a plan earlier in the day or better yet, a day or two or three in advance, I'm not interested. I don't want to hang out anymore. I swear to God, you sound like a feminist. You sound like a jaded 
feminist. When I look at you, I see a conservative, but I hear a blue haired woman tell me about the patriarchy and how there's a wage gap. And I, I, I hear a feminist and the nose ring doesn't help either. Make a plan. I want to hang out with you at this time. It doesn't have to even be a date. I want to see you at this time. Are you free at this time? Or when are you free? I will accommodate my schedule to see you. When are you free? I want to see you. It seems to me that you are dealing with or you were dealing with a lot of uh, soy beta boys, uh, men who are not assertive, men who don't know how to take control. Um, men who are not comfortable taking control and therefore you have to basically be the alpha of the relationship. Once again, a problem I can't relate to men who want to see me usually either use their words or they send a text. I want to see you. They let me know they want to see me and they actually find out my schedule. And then from there, they take it over. They basically take charge. But then again, I don't know. It sounds to me, Tommy, that you are not attracting that type of man or you're not attracting those type of men. And, uh, and once again, you have to ask yourself, why? What is it about you that are attracting um, passive men or beta men or men who are not assertive, men who don't know how to take charge? These are the kind of questions you have to ask yourself. I know it's not rocket science, but men of 2020, it seems like it's pretty difficult for you to figure out. And I'm not a feminist, so please don't take this as a feminist rant. I love men. I think men are great. I think men have failed themselves and they failed us. And I'm just trying to help you out because I think there are a lot of really great guys out there who need a little help. <laughs> They need a little help, right, Tommy? You don't need no help at all. It's all them, not you. It's them, not you, right? Girl, you're so delusional. And yes, you sound like a feminist. I am really shocked that I never saw this part of you before. You're a grifter. You are a grifter. There's nothing conservative about you. You know, I'm going to tell you how you can always tell when you're dealing with a conservative woman, okay? You know you're dealing with a conservative woman when you ask her, if she was to find the man of her dreams or a good man, whatever that definition consists of, whatever the characteristics he have to have, if she find her soulmate, her partner, uh, her second half, her better half, whatever she wants to call it, you have to ask her this question, who has the final word? In other words, who's in charge? Who has the last word? Now, I'm sorry, but after listening to Tommy Lauren, it's obvious that she will not basically let the man have the final word. She is going to run everything. And that's the problem. You know, she's very emotional. I'm very emotional. Women are emotional. And sometimes that emotion makes us a little irrational. And men, if you pick a good one, all right, if you pick a good one and they are out there, trust me, I know. Okay, from personal experience, you would have one who's thinking more rational. He's not thinking emotional. It's only men who don't have father figures in their lives or men who, uh, or don't, ha it's only little boys who don't have a, a good representation of a man in their lives. And we're not talking about that liberal stuff. But like I said, you're a grifter, girl. I found you. I saw you. You took the mask off. There's nothing conservative about you. And the thing about it is, is that you really don't believe in what you are saying. You don't practice what you're preaching. I bet you if someone, said, if someone was to ask you, do it. I dare you all to find Tommy and ask her, who's in charge of your relationship when you find your king, your partner, your man, your better half, your fiance, your whatever, who's in charge. I bet you this last relationship she got out of, I bet you she was the one ruling him, telling him what to do. You know what I'm saying? But basically telling him to fix dinner. This any other. I, she doesn't look like someone who will say to her man that she chose, baby, you know what? I trust you. I know you're going to do everything that's in our best interest. And therefore you're in charge. You have the final say. 
Um, and I may not like it, but I trust my decision in picking you to be my man in my life, to be my husband or to be my boyfriend or whatever the title you want to give him. And if I bet you if you ask Tommy uh, who has the most responsibility, she would probably say it's shared responsibility. 50-50. 50% of he is responsible and I'm 50% of I'm responsible. And that's not conservatism. That's not conservatism whatsoever. And she does sound like a feminist. And I am convinced because the nose ring kind of gave it away that she is indeed a feminist. There is nothing conservative about this woman. She just use the talking points but when it comes to her relationships she is far from being a freaking conservative she is strictly all about liberal it's about the man the man has to be the one who fix himself and you have to accept me for who i am okay no girl it does not work that way fix yourself you're the one with the issues. That's the reason why you attract the men that you attract, okay? It's not them. I, I keep saying this throughout this entire video. It's not them, it's you. It's not them, it's you. It's not them, it's you. I am really so sick of my friends having to deal with trash men. I am tired of dealing with trash men, so I'm gonna help you out. Girl, stop. This whole, I'm gonna help you out, I'm gonna help you out. These, these trash men. Baby, sweetie, honey, darling. If you keep attracting trash men, it's because you are a trash woman. Deal with it. Next thing, value, value, okay? Value, value, take that in. Just repeat it to yourself until it makes sense, okay? If you wanna date a girl that has nothing going on, then that's fine. But please do not mix in people like me and my friends who have something going on with your other girls that have nothing going on. And by nothing going on, I mean this. I don't, there is no job that is unimportant. There is no job that's not valuable or that's not worthy, it is. But if you wanna mix in people like me and people like my friends who are go-getters, who work really hard, who make their own money, who are talented, skilled, ambitious, please don't mix us in with the Tatianas. You know what this sounds like? This sounds like black women who talk about how many degrees they have, um, what type of job they have and how they are in charge of several projects within their company. Um, they get paid this amount of money. They go to chit. They talk about, they give this big resume that men really don't care about. All a man cares about is what type of wife will you be? And we're talking about conservatives now. We have, we have to talk about conservatives. I'm not talking about liberal relationships. I'm talking about conservative relationships. And what you're doing, Tommy, you're basically saying, I have this career. I am a go-getter. I have this going. And you, you're talking about your resume as if you're elevating yourself up above these Tatianas. But when I listen to you, the question I ask you, I want to ask you is, how are you as a person, not your accolades, not your achievements, not your job experience, not your current pay scale? How are you as a person? What characteristics do you have as a woman that will make you a better choice than the Tatianas. You see, the Tatianas seem like they would be willing to be the wife and mother of his children that he's looking for. I don't hear that with you. I don't hear any, I, I hear nothing but a liberal. It's, I, it's like, it's like, I really don't understand. It's like, you're talking about, you don't want to be uh, grouped in with these Tatianas, but if you have to compete with Tatianas, you have to ask yourself why are they preferring the Tatianas over you. And trust me, it's more than what's between their legs. To me, it seems like you expect more than what you're worth and you believe that all the things you achieved in school and all these work uh all the places you have worked and where you currently uh, uh where you currently live and that you have been on fox or you I think you're still on fox or something i don't know um how many followers you have on instagram and facebook and and twitter you think this is really what a man is looking for and it sounds very, you sound very conceited. 
And your vanity is not needed. And I don't think men are looking for that. Well, not the type of man that you want. So it looks like the Tatiana's is a better choice because you're high maintenance. And I don't think most men, some men will put up with you, but I don't think most men will deal with you and your <laughs> And quite frankly, we take it as an insult if we find out that you are also talking to five Tatianas who have nothing going on. People like me and my friends are going to be insulted by that. And there's almost really no coming back from it. So if you want that kind of a girl, the kind of girl who's just kind of happy going through the motions of life, not really super ambitious, hasn't really found herself yet, doesn't really have a whole lot going on other than she's pretty, please just go after them. And please do not mix us in. We don't want to be there. And they don't want you there. Hence why they're going after the Tatianas and not you. See, it looks like the Tatianas are a little bit less maintenance than you. You have all these demands. You believe all your achievements make you a better person and not your characteristics, not your morals, not your values, not the thing that you should bring to the table as a conservative woman, which as of right now, we have determined that you are not, you are far from that. And so basically they will go after the Tatianas, right? Younger, better, don't have a lot of issues, don't come with a lot of baggage. So basically, yeah, they're gonna choose them over you. And I think you mad, girl, you mad. There's a lot of women out there that I know that are my good friends who have amazing jobs, who work really hard, but who can't seem to find a decent guy, even if they go up in age five to 10, to 15 years because those guys all want to be with 21 year olds who have nothing going on. It's very unfortunate. I don't think it's going to be fulfilling, but I would say to the men out there, try to maybe find a woman that you can talk to, communicate with, might actually have together, might actually be ambitious and have something going on or want to have something going on. I don't care what she does. She doesn't have to be on TV. She doesn't have to be a PhD. She doesn't have to be a television producer. She doesn't have to own her own company, but be ambitious and have something going on. Tommy, you cannot tell a man what he should want, what he should be looking for. I think he knows what he wants and what he is looking for. You're basically trying to shame these men for picking Tatiana's, in your own words, over you. And as you can see, it, it's not working well for you, girl. Mm -mm, not working well for you at all. Those women out there are going to be a lot more fulfilling to you. You're actually going to enjoy your time. And if you actually might want a sustainable and healthy and stable relationship, that's probably the kind of girl you're going to need to find. Not the Tatianas who just want to look cute and post Instagram stories. Say what? <laughs> that's what you'll do. You look cute and post Instagram stories. Oh my God, the lack of self-awareness with this child is amazing. You do exactly the same thing as these Tatianas. The only difference is, is you're a little older and they are a lot younger. And it seems to me that you're intimidated by them. I, I, I smell jealousy. It doesn't smell too good on you, girl. Oh my goodness. The, the thing about it is, is that once again, you're trying to shame these men for choosing younger women over you. And I don't really think it would be a competition if you did not feel that you don't have to make any changes and that you don't have to compromise on what you are looking for or what you expect. Because it seems to me that you want an alpha, but you want an alpha or you want a go-getting man, but you want one that's going to compromise and let you be in charge too. When it comes to conservatism, um, that doesn't work, girlfriend. That's not how it goes. And so, therefore, a conservative man will go for a Tatiana over you because, like I said earlier, you're high maintenance and a lot of baggage. They are young. They don't have a lot of baggage yet. So he's going to get her, okay, wife her up and have some babies by her something like i said you were not interested in you were like a typical liberal woman who were looking for your career you was all about the the career you was all about writing your books you was all all about traveling around the world 
having a family, being a wife, being a mother was not your priority. And now you are butthurt because these Fatianas are now putting it as their priority over their career. And now they are the women that the men pick and they leave you behind. And, you, and you're salty about that. The next thing on my list is this, consistency. It really does not help me or my friends or any woman in general if you are really cool and you're really interested when you first start talking to them and then give it three, four, five days and all of a sudden you're not consistent anymore. You don't make plans. You don't really care. You kind of fade in and out. You're talking to five other Tatianas. Consistency is important. Actually, that means he's not that into you. <laughs> I mean, take the hint. If he's doing all that, He's not into you, girl. Move on. My last thing on my list is also very important. Don't be, excuse my language, don't be a Don't be a Don't be a If you have then failed and you lost a woman of value like myself or my friends, and then we don't really care anymore, don't be a Don't be butt hurt. You did it to yourself, okay? And it's no longer my problem. Now it's become a personal problem of yours. So don't be a And by the way, if I'm no longer interested because your effort is that's not me being a That's not me being difficult. That's me having a standard in which I expect from people. I do have high standards and high expectations. My friends have high standards and high expectations. Do you want to know why? We've worked for those. Okay? We work hard. We're successful. We take care of ourselves. We try to look cute. And you and your five cats will live happily ever after. <laughs> That's why we have the ability to be somewhat what you call difficult. It's not difficult. We just have a baseline standard. And if you can't meet that standard, that's okay. A lot of men cannot. But if you are one of those men out there, and I, I have them all over my DMs, sometimes I check them, and you guys are like, what would it take to be with someone like you? What would it take to be with your friends? What are girls like you? What are they looking for? I laid them out for you very simply there. In order to have a shot with a girl like me or girls like my friends, girls that are worth a damn, you don't really have to be Brad Pitt. You don't have to be famous. You don't even really have to make a lot of money. Lies. Oh, that is a lot. Girl, you know daggone well. You are not going to get a man that's not making more money than you. Child, keep that lot of yourself. Or have a really fantastic job. You just have to be determined. You have to be in some way successful in that you want to attain some certain kind of success for yourself you're driven you have goals you can handle a woman with standards that's not going to turn you off and you're going to put in the effort to be with somebody like myself or my friends we deserve that and they deserve to be with anybody but you and your friends it will be a cold day in hell when i chase a man and I know that's the same thing for my friends as well. And if my friends are listening and they're thinking about chasing a man, please, for the love of God, do not. Because there is not, not one single man on planet Earth, okay, that is worth making any woman feel like she is not good enough. I don't care how hot a girl is, how smart, how successful, how rich, we have all dealt with men who treat us like we are not good enough. When I was in college, I too attracted men who treated me as if I was not good enough. And you know why? Because at that time, I believed subconsciously and consciously that I wasn't good enough. So therefore I attracted men who reflected my inner thoughts back to me. It's just how it works. If you do not love yourself, you will attract people in your life who also don't love you, who also don't care about you. Once again, like attracts like. If you know your worth and you know you are good enough, you really don't have to tell anybody. It was showing how you treat yourself, how you treat others, what you expect. 
the thing about it is I don't believe you think you're good enough. You keep reading off your resume. You keep talking about how they got to come this and for you. And you, you, you're very, you're a very insecure person, Tommy. And I don't think men want to deal with you. Now, don't get me wrong. You will not have a problem getting a man, but the problem is getting the type of man that will make you happy. I don't see that happening for you until you actually work on your issues. Stop thinking it's the men and, and it's their problem and focus on you. Work on your issues. And I promise you, the type of men that you will attract will improve drastically. Hope you guys have all enjoyed my PSA, my Instagram live. I love you all. Hope I gave you some valuable tips and advice. But hey, those are just my final thoughts from Nashville, Tennessee in my kitchen. God bless and take care. Wow. Listen, if you are a conservative woman, please don't listen to Tommy Lauren. It's clear and obvious to me that she's a liberal. Um, the mask was completely off during this rant on her Facebook page. She's giving you advice from a liberal point of view. And remember, this is the woman who told her fiance that she can't marry him because she's not ready. That is not what conservative women do. That is not what conservative women are all about. She chose her career. She chose her lifestyle over being a mother and a wife. That is not conservatism. That is what liberals do. And now she is pretending to be a conservative by giving other conservative women advice on what to look for with a man by also shaming men and telling men that they're little boys. Everything she said in this video was, was trash. She wants to call men trash. She's trash. And that's the reason why she's been attracting trashy men. I'm really angry at the fact that I thought she was a legitimate conservative, but no, she's not. And you could just tell by the way that she just lives her life. She lives her life as a high maintenance liberal woman who puts her career first, who puts her education first, who actually, you know, children are on the back burner because it's all about her first. And then now, uh, I don't know if she's ready to have kids or not. I'm not even sure. Apparently she's not because like I said, she ended her relationship with her fiance and decided to call off the engagement this past February. So it, I don't know what she wants. And maybe she doesn't know what she wants. But these women should be ignored, never taken seriously, okay? Remember, she doesn't even practice what she preach. So therefore her opinion is invalid. Anyway, let me know what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you actually see where she's coming from? Do you see where I'm coming from? I would love to hear what you have to say about this and leave the comment down below this video. Also, when you get a chance, if you could, it really helps me out with the algorithm. If you can like the video, give it a thumbs up and also subscribe if you haven't done that. This is Tree from treeoflogic.com and I'll see you all next time. Later taters.